Oh, when the big news breaks, you know we're going to be here to break it down. Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets have reached a standstill when it comes to contract negotiations. Sham Sharania breaks the news, and we break down what it means in the short term if the Brooklyn Nets can survive this offseason and still be a viable championship contender in the aftermath. All coming up right after the theme music. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, that's right. It's the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. We thank you for making us your first listen on the podcast spectrum. We're, of course, free on all those great platforms. Let you know today's episode is going to be brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Over here, Adam Marbrecht. Over there, Doug Norrie. The news cycle, my friend, it never ends as we're about to dive in on the Sham Sharania report. That, but he's as, as dialed in specifically not just the NBA, but with Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets over the course of this offseason, his report that suggests maybe we're we're farther away from Kyrie being a net than we thought. Yeah, so Shams came out on uh, Monday morning. There had been some little bit of inkling that something like this was going to come out over the weekend from just like there was like little dribs and drabs that there was going to be some breaking or pressing Nets news. I wasn't sure what it was going to be. It was obviously this. Um, that Kyrie and the Nets are, you know, as they describe it, at an impasse in terms of the contract renegotiation. Which, if you go back a, you know, a little more than, a little less than a year from now, um, or before now, you this was felt like a lock, right? Like going into last season, it was like they're going to re up Durant, KD, Durant, Irving, and Harden all at once, and then they get Durant under contract. And obviously, we know how the Kyrie and Harden thing worked out, but now. You know, you're only getting one though. At least you got the Kevin Durant. <laughs> Heading into this offseason, where you know, whatever you think about Kyrie at this point, it's kind of a priority for the Nets to have to sign him because of just what little they can do if they don't sign him. And to hear that the team and the player and his camp are at an impasse and have it at a standstill, you know, and that it was it was basically said that it's opening to explore other options now, right? Like yep. he's open to exploring other free agent options if they exist. And that is nothing short of not a great situation for the Nets uh, from a basketball perspective, you know, like where, you know, what all the details are, we're not really sure we could probably guess, but the, yeah, this is um not really the news you wanted to hear heading into the draft and heading into free agency that, essentially a priority signing for the Nets uh, for to be like maintain championship contender status might not happen now. So I'm, I don't know. It's not the end of the world, but man, this is not great. Well, and that's kind of where I want to start because do you, uh, where do you stand on this? Right. This feels like, okay, both sides are saying, Hey, who's going to blink first. Right. My, my, my indication out of this would be Kyrie Irving, and I referenced this over the last couple of weeks, talked with Antonio Daniels, former player, now analyst. He said there should be an understanding on both sides, right? The talent is there. He's worth the money. Also, Kyrie should be able to understand what give he should be willing to have here after the last couple of seasons that's gone on and the idea of committing big money to him. Is this Kyrie Irving saying? I think it is. I want the max contract. That's what I deserve as a basketball player. And I'm not interested in having caveats around my contract or having stipulations or having bonuses tied into it. It's max dollars for me or I'm willing to walk away. That would be my guess. Again, there's no specifics in here about where yeah. the where the contract negotiations have broken down. Like they don't, but there, there are only so many spots, like years and money. I, I don't know. There's no, the contracts, you know, have a lot of pretty language in it. That's usually, excuse me, that's usually where the 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 disagreements occur. Right? It's like how many years you want it to be and how much money you want it to be. And so there's clearly some problem there. I think you're probably totally correct in that he sees himself as a max player, which we know from a basketball perspective he is. Um, and so it's not that, but there's this other stuff that we've talked time and time again about around the a sense of maybe there's like a lack of reliability on his part, right? There's a sense that the organization, and Mark said it, right? Like it was clearly on their mind. Mark said in one of his postseason pressers that, um, you know, that they needed commitment, you know, people that wanted to be there and play. Like it was a veiled 
comment toward Kyrie, uh, almost 100%, right? It was like, we not sure about if his commitment level is like where we want everyone's to be. And if that's what their feeling is, then you can be darn sure that that's going to be reflected in whatever contract they offer him. Because if you have worries about someone's commitment or if you have worries about some, how reliable someone's going to be, you really would be hard pressed to offer them full years, full max contract if you were worried about those things. And if you're not allowed to hedge against some of those worries, then this is almost definitely where they, the two sides don't see it because look, we know about Kyrie. Kyrie Irving does not see himself like this. Kyrie Irving, I think as times has said that he's more of like a victim of circumstance more than anything else. Right? Like I'm putting those words in his mouth, but that's the general idea around what he said. Right? It's like, it's not him. It's all the other stuff that's going on. Right. And so if he, if he views it that way, then of course he's not going to see it as anything short of full max contract. Cause it's not his, it's not his issue. The, the reasons that he hasn't been on the court. If, if that is the case and the line in the sand is being drawn here, I'll give my opinion on it first, rather than constantly volleying vol the ball over to you. If that's the case and the line, in the sand has been drawn. Then it becomes, should the Brooklyn nets give in and give the max contract for max dollars, max years, and go forward committed to this version of the team. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not going to label this hope for the best, but live with the results. Or should they be willing to walk away from it and say, it's going to be a different version of it. We're going to get into what the mechanics look like if he's going to go to free agency. I personally, I, I'm, I'm okay with the Nets taking a stand in whatever that looks like from a contract standpoint and having a hard enough line where, if that means that we're waiting for who blinks first and you want to go to free agency and opt out of the player option, so be it. Because I, I, I understand the deal you make when you go into superstar basketball and that's the sacrifice. But I think that it's been a bad sample size over these last handful of years. And the Brooklyn Nets are unwilling to do that dance for another three, four years. It's always a little concerning when the team that has you under the roof is playing hardball with you, right? Because like they tend to know or they, at least in their minds, have more information than anybody else, right? And so I always get a little worried around situations where, you know, typically I feel this way more about injuries mm -hmm. than I do about situations like this, but it's a probably a good proxy for thinking about this. When the team that has had you under its roof for the last couple of years is not willing to do something because of whatever they view as like maybe the issue or whatever, um, I always not like I give it more credence, but I tend to worry about it because they're not going to tell you everything that's going on. But there's clearly like something that they understand that maybe some of the other MB, rest of the NBA or fans or whatever don't don't understand mm -hmm. because and that's why they're unwilling to do it. So the, the people that that want to come in and say, open up the checkbook, it's Kyrie Irving, go for it like these guys that are in the front office aren't just shoot from the hip kind of people like these are analytical, thought driven, logical like long horizons kind of like planning kind of people. And so I'm not saying it's correct, but I do tend to lend it a little more credence when that's the case, because they just have seemingly all the information. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, 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 and if they're unwilling and if the two sides are like this far apart to have it come out, like in the media now, and who knows which side it comes leaked from sham stuff usually comes more player side. So the, and like Woj just has typically been the front office side of, of things, at least in this kind of cycle. So I would tend to think this is more of a Kyrie Irving leak than it is a Nets leak, but it still shows that they're very, very far apart. And they both have probably incredibly complete competing reasons about what they think the value is. So could be posturing, but I don't know. I, this is, you can kind of see it. I mean, you can kind of see it coming, right? Like I, we didn't predict this, but it's not, well, I wasn't shocked at all when I read this. Well, by the way, so let's get into that on the other side of it real quick. I just want to remind everybody while the Brooklyn Nets don't have any draft picks uh, at, at this moment coming up later this week, every other team does, or most of them do. There's a couple others that are the same boat as us. Bottom line is every single team around the league is going to be going live on draft night, breaking down their coverage of the draft picks. Maybe there's going to be trades. There's a lot of buzz around that as well. So if you want to be able to digest some of that, Doug is going to be at the ready in case anything does happen for Brooklyn. Well, you can go ahead and be on YouTube, catch the alerts, subscribe to the Locked On podcast over on social media. You'll get all the little pings and get the local experts breaking down those picks. And especially if it's a team you think's in the path of the Brooklyn Nets, might as well find out. What did they add over the course of this draft in the offseason that could make it even more difficult for Brooklyn to say nothing 
of what they do in their own house. All right. When you're done with that, go over to betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. If you go to betonline.net right now, you can actually get championship odds for next season. Uh, Adam, you want to guess where the Nets are? What, you don't have to give me the odds, just like where they rank in terms of number. Seventh. Oh, fifth. Uh, they were third. Um, they're yeah. fifth right now, plus 825 on betonline.net. You got the Warriors, then you got the Celtics and the Clippers, the Bucks, and then your Brooklyn Nets. Might have fallen a little bit on this Kyrie Irving news. Regardless, betonline.net, like I said, number one source for all of that betting stuff that you need. Their best when it comes to sports scores, podcasts, news, they, not just basketball, either rolling through MLB. They got MMA on the weekends, boxing, golf. It's all there. Head on over to betonline.net today. Uh, you can learn about all the different trends, all the different action. Take some umbrage with where the Nets are in terms of championship odds. Bet online where the game starts. Okay, just right where you, where you left it off there about kind of seeing this coming. We covered it all off season. I, I'm not. This isn't a pat on the back, but when we talked about it a month and a half ago, I said I, I think sh- you know should they. And I think they should, the Brooklyn Nets, be willing to draw a line in the sand and say, we're willing to bring you back on multiple years, but it has to look a certain way because, right? And I'll reference just quickly that Antonio Daniels conversation I had with him again, because he said, totally worth the money and also totally reasonable that all players in the NBA understand there's also the business side of it. And if you can't acknowledge that piece of it, this is how you end up at this point. So no, to to your question, I'm not surprised that all this is where we are. It now just comes down to our, our... would you let Kyrie Irving walk away? Like I, I would let him walk into free agency right now. Not because, not, not because I don't, not because I don't know what he is and what he means to the team and what the cost of letting him leave means in the short term. But I just, how long can, how many times can you come back to it and kind of get your butt kicked around a certain situation and go maybe one more time, maybe one more bite at the apple to see if it's poison or not. Yeah, I'm of two minds of this, and this is a really, really tough one because. Okay, and I hate to hedge this, but I I just don't think there's a definitive answer. I can see the side about drawing a hard line in the sand. That is much easier to do when you have functional ways to replace the talent. (laughs) The Nets do not have that. And so the, the equation gets really skewed around that. So like I'm all for the you can't sign on to someone that you feel like you, it's hard to trust, right? Like, you know, maybe not year one, but you, you, by year four, like if you're, if the first three years have been kind of all over the place, then like, it's hard to project out to five, five more years and feel like it's going to be completely copacetic. So I, I totally get wanting to draw a line in the sand around that and not wanting to sign up for the uncertainty around what that can bring at max dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, you know, it's all dollars too. If it was a min contract, whatever, like we're not talking about this. It's because we're talking about a max contract and a lot of money that's going to hamper your ability to sign anybody else for the foreseeable future. That being said, the Nets don't have a way to replace his talent at all by the way that their current cap is set up and by the way that their contracts are set up and by the mechanisms that it would could like what would end up occurring if he were to leave, they cannot sign anyone in free agency for the same kind of money. The only thing they could even recoup on him leaving would be some kind of sign and trade, which I'm telling you right now would only bring back like equal dollars. It will not bring back anywhere close to talent. And like Shams did go through a couple of the scenarios around teams that were linked to maybe have interest, the mm-hmm. Lakers, the Clippers, the Knicks, they have nothing that they can send back in terms of talent that will come anywhere close to replacing Kyrie Irving. And I, and I mean, even if you aggregate some players together, like it's just not, oh, yeah. it just doesn't oh. work. It doesn't work. And so, so the, that's the, I, I'm on the, I'm on the fence. Like you can hear me. I, I, I can go either way. Like if he, if there's no, if there's no middle ground to be had like three years less than max with some incentives or something like that. I might side on the side of signing them. I, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I might side on the sign of doing it because I just think that the downside is costing you a Kevin Durant's championship window with significantly less talent and very few functional ways to replace it. So it's or close. That- I think I, a gun to my head. I think I say, I think I say do it. And I, I can, I don't feel great about it. <laughs> right. And I'm like, ah, God, I hope this Russian roulette works out. Does that um, make sense? Like, that no, makes- no, 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 of course, because, because the, the last part you said there is, Kevin Durant's championship window, right? So, and this is what I think is interesting, though. Um, 
and you know, we'll talk about it. Of course, the week Golden State Warriors they won the championship, wouldn't you know it? And I think that there's things to take away from that, and to take away what Boston Celtics look like this year, and what a lot of teams look like around the league. The interesting thing to me is we talked about deferring the pick, right? And ultimately, how there was so much uncertainty that that's why you defer it because you get so much more clarity next year. In some ways, I, I get I get what you're saying because there is so much uncertainty if you say goodbye, Kyrie enjoy your free agency, right? And wherever you end up landing, then it opens up even more uncertainty. Now, the interesting thing would be to your point, you're not getting back like player for player. I think we walked through the scenarios of there's only a handful of teams that could afford to take him on directly at max dollars on the open market. The Lakers aren't one of them. The Knicks aren't one of them. The Clippers aren't one of them. Now these other teams, one of them being the San Antonio Spurs, perfect culture match there with the player, right? But they can hold him and then flip him in December, I believe it would be, and they can recoup, you know, capital, draft assets, et cetera. So that's a, that's something that other teams could be looking at that have the the financial ability to pick him up directly on the open market. The other piece is the sign and trade that the Nets are involved in, which I do think is fairly likely. Now you're right, you're not getting back any of the talent. You know, take the Lakers as the example, who are maybe one of the desperate teams. I had a good conversation with Brian Kamenetsky of the Locked On Lakers podcast. That's going to go up as its own thing that you can check out. Or even the Knicks, though. Let's use the Knicks because they have a lot of guys with money on them. We're going to get Julius Randle back, and we're going to get Evan Fournier back. Whoever throwing, you know, throwing names here, or we're going to get oh, here. Uh, here, I'll, I'll give you. Let me, hold on, before you even just say, I'll just give you the guys. I'll give you the scenario the champs put out there. Oh yeah, fine, that's fine. Because I think I think it'll probably be fairly on point here. Uh, you know, the Lakers. And I'll, oh, by the way. Well, I won't even mention the Lakers one. Go check out that conversation. Hit hit, hit the Knicks one here. As, okay, as so it was just like it was like you could pile together Evan Fournier, Alec Burks, uh, Nerlens Noel, and Kemba Walker, like some combination of those guys, right? I don't think Randall will be part of that. Okay, like this is like these. I'm saying these are the names but, you're going to talk about. Right, that's fine. So use that as the baseline, though. But then the immediate thing that you're picking up in in that conversation. You're getting draft picks, right? You're getting a handful of draft picks back in that because nobody, I don't care how tumultuous it may be to have Kyrie Irving on your team or what the reputation is around the league right now. If you're committing to the sign and trade in max dollars, both parties, Brooklyn Nets, and in this case, the New York Knicks are understanding you're willing to commit to this player on max dollars, which means we're evaluating him as one of the best players in the league, which means we want compensation accordingly. The dollar to dollar matching up to make that deal work is one thing. We're also going to want assets. So, you know, you defer this extra pick that you got from, from the trade with Philadelphia. If you pick up multiple more first round, first round picks, while the short term uncertainty would say, what is this upcoming year going to look like? We're going to be heavily dependent on some young players like Cam Thomas or, you know, Dayron Sharp and Kessler Edwards, or those guys are immediately going to be brought up in trade talks to bring in other players to put around Kevin Durant. The short term would be very uncertain around Kevin Durant. But you know that you would have you would replenish capital to be able to make different decisions and different potential moves. I'm not saying any of those options meets what Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and potentially a healthy Ben Simmons would mean for the championship window. But I I I, I am, while not fully committed to it, I'm willing to say there are a lot of scenarios where you replenish and make the the short-ish long-term future of the Nets start to get brighter and brighter as you walk down the road, as opposed to what the potential could be if you commit to Kyrie Irving. And I just, I, I don't know. I think I'm too shell-shocked from this experience to say, yeah, let's give him the max contract. And if it doesn't work out, by the way, it's going to be that many more years before you get out from underneath everything. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I, I, I can't argue. This is why I meant about like, I didn't like, I wanted this coin to land, you know, <laughs> Right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> like, just yeah. stand, just yeah. stand up straight because I, both sides are completely fraught with peril and un uncertainty to a point where it's like almost untenable. And like the and these all these scenarios just kind of highlight this. It's like okay, yeah, you can get maybe some draft capital and some you know just grab bag of mediocre basketball players in return, so you can feel the team that's like maybe makes the playoffs and no chance wins the championship. Like. Okay, I guess, right? You'd have, but, to, you'd have to end up okay. offloading some of those guys too. What's up? Yeah, go. This is the other thing. What is, we talked about this in the playoffs. I'll pose the question and we come back on the other side. The Dallas Mavericks go on the run with Luka. Now, expectations of actually making the finals and winning a championship, maybe not. But he's one of the best players in the league. And we had that conversation as the playoffs were kicking off. How much can you put on the shoulders of one of the players in the league? How far to be able to take you? Hey, look how far they got. Shouldn't the Nets be? I'm not talking. Maybe not, the championship odds fall. 
But with Kevin Durant and a more and a deeper pool of talent, not a better singular talent, but a deeper pool of talent around him, shouldn't they be able to set the expectation of being a deep playoff team? Um, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, well, I, I just don't think. Yeah, I disagree. I, I, I okay. It all depends on who these players are. If it's like Al, Evan Fournier and Alec Burks, no. Um, if it's like someone that's if it's specific kind of players that they lack right now, like a great three and D wing defender or, you know, a, a, a stretch center that can like defend. Like, I, I guess it would matter. It would depend on who some of these other parts were. I don't see a lot of these parts coming from the teams that are mentioned here. And so I guess like that's where this falls down for me. It's, I, I agree. I, look, I agree with you that it, we not, we need not all fit one model. We, we've talked about this. It doesn't all need to be three superstars at the top. I, we've said this, that this doesn't need to be the case. But it does matter who players three through seven are, right? Like, it, you know, and and I worry that and I, and I worry that those three through seven are not all built the same in these scenarios. And and so, like, if you look at Boston, like their third through seventh, sixth player was really, really good across the board, could kind of do almost everything, right? Like, or could do some things at a super elite level and then could get by in other ways. Like the Warriors played a, a specific system and had a supporting cast that like just perfectly fit. And then they got like an all time performance from Steph, right? Like there's, there's, there's no one right way to do it. I just get worried that the, the, what the teams that we're talking about who Kyrie might be interested in going to, because notice like the Spurs were not mentioned in this article about him being interested in going to these places. Like you got a real, sometimes it's like addition by omission here. Like you, <laughs> there's the, when teams aren't mentioned, it's, he's like not interested, <laughs> Right, not interested in a rebuild in San in San Antonio. Interested in New York because it's close to home. I'm putting words in, their, in everyone's mouth mm -hmm. here, but it's easy to see why. You know, New York because it's close to home, L.A. because it's L.A. and the Clippers and Lakers could win the championship. Yep. Like no other teams were mentioned here, and those teams just don't have the assets to send back. And I that's that's where I, that's where I get most concerned. In a moment here, I will paint a beautiful picture for the road ahead for the Brooklyn Nets with or without Kyrie Irving. It's all going to be fine, friends. Okay, so I mean, it is it, it is so tumultuous. The one thing I will say you mentioned there about the teams that get mentioned, that's why I think it at least keeps the Nets in a positive position here should things fall apart with Kyrie because it isn't go it doesn't look like it's going to be one of those, yeah, one of these teams is going to sign them and then eventually get them to where they want. I, this is going to be a one-to-one. -one. This is going to be a sign-and-trade scenario with one of these teams that are being discussed. I, I want to focus, I do want to focus a little bit on the Knicks just from a player standpoint and try to, paint that picture a little bit broader as far as what you could put around Kevin Durant. But do you think would the Nets care about staying away from trade sign and trading Kyrie Irving to the New York Knicks in the same city and say, Hey, yeah, we're going to, now we're going to see you and we're going to put you in our path, right? The other two teams are Western conference teams. We talked about this before with the trade with Harden and Philadelphia, keep him out of your way. Um, do you think that the, would the Nets shorten that list and say, not the Knicks. You want to get out of here? We can do it for you. It's going to be it's going to be West Coast. It's going to be Western Conference. Now, if they were to do this, they wouldn't be in a position to like start picking and choosing. I like they so would just have to probably take back match whatever. And I, the reason I actually don't think they'd care is because they just like you said they just did this with Philly. Like they sent right. it to another Eastern Conference titled contender, and you know, arguably made them better in the process, and just were able to were willing to do it because that's just what they needed to do. So I don't think I don't think I'd be I don't think I'd be too worried about that part of it. Marx doesn't feel like he's the kind of person that worries about this too much. I will say, like, if you had a bet right now, though, um, if you had a bet right now, what you think happens, right? This is day zero of this news coming out, right? So, like, there's going to be weeks of weeks of a couple weeks of us trying to figure out what's going on here, and there'll mm -hmm. be more news that comes along. If you just had a bet right now, what you think happens? What, what do you what do you think the final scenario is? I think he's gone. Oh man, I think yeah. he's back. This is crazy. Go, well, why do you like? Okay, go ahead. Be, specifically, one of the reasons why this report comes out, as you said, from Shams, who's usually on the player side of it. The one thing I'll say is, if if you're getting this type of public pushback, we think from Kyrie Irving's side, from his camp, then it suggests that the Brooklyn Nets have kind of put their cards out there for what they're willing to do with him. And yeah. now he, you know, you always say a lot of these things get negotiated in the public forum. So now it's about winning the public battle of, hey, you know, I, I'm willing to do it. I want to be here, 
but they don't want to give me the max dollars. If that's the case, like while it is, while you are pushing the narrative that you're, that you're, that you're interested in, it also can, can maybe be a little bit, I'm, I'm not labeling it desperate, but right. It's saying like, Hey, I'm trying to move the needle here. I'm trying to convince everyone else to convince the Brooklyn Nets that not bringing me back at a max contract is going to be to their massive long-term disastrous detriment. And we, and we haven't even touched on if there would be any additional fallout here around Kevin Durant and what he would feel about the team. But I just, you know, we, we've talked about these different scenarios with the Brooklyn Nets. I think nine times out of 10, anywhere else in the league, I would say, oh no, he'll be back. They'll sort this out. Uh, you know, Zach Levine might be a good example of that. Ah, now they'll sort this out. He'll be back for the Chicago Bulls. But Brooklyn has ended up on the other side of that coin more often than not of late. And I, I, I just think that it's, it, it's finally gotten to the place where internally the Brooklyn Nets are accepting that if not on their terms, they are going to be willing to accept. We, 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 we've maybe lost our championship window. We're going to have to reboot this thing, but we cannot go any further down this road with Kyrie. Now, by the way, the caveat, and I'm not hedging in here, but the caveat is if Kyrie comes back to it and he signs a deal that has incentives and has caveats in the contract, then I think he can be back and on a shorter term deal. But if this is max contract, max dollars that he wants, and that's the end result, I think he ends up getting it somewhere else. Ah, so you hedge at the end. That, that's all right. But because I was going to say like the, um, no, because I the reason I think he is back is because I think what this, I think what they're going to find here is that the market, whatever perceived market he thinks is out there is like not there. Because here's the other thing. Those other three teams that were mentioned, the Clippers, Lakers, Knicks, they can't just outright sign them. They have to trade. Like they have to, they have to do a sign and trade here. They cannot, they do not have room on the, on the sheet um, unless, they, unless they were able to unload alternatively tons of salary. Like the Knicks could maybe do it by piecemealing together a bunch of things, uh, separate deals. And then like having, you know, Kyrie opt out and then, and then do it. I'll also need him to opt in and then yeah. like, and then they sign it, they trade him after the opt in. But like, I just don't think, I don't know why, like the Nets just might balk at that and say, oh, no, I'm not doing that. Like, you know, we're not going to take back these things. Like just go, go see if you can get max dollars somewhere else. Like it's not going to work. And so I think that my guess is this is posturing and it's, two sides that like don't see very much eye to eye right now. But I think I have a feeling that when the mark, when they go look at the market here, it's going to be like, Hey, the market's like not this super robust place full of championship contenders that have tons of money that are willing to take you on at max dollars person who might not be perceived as the most reliable. And I think that like, give this a week or two. And I think you start hearing, Hey, because again, remember, no specifics were given here, so no one needs to acquie no one needs to acquiesce later around mm -hmm. someone capitulating around what the deal was. It wasn't like, hey, they offered three years and he said no. There were no details given here, so we never need to know what the initial offer was for any for everyone to, to be come able to, to save an agreement that everyone was happy with. Yeah, like it's right. for everyone to save face. Like it wasn't like, hey, they offered three years with a bunch of stipulations. They just said impasse, and so the later no one no one needs to backpedal at all about looking like they lost if they just are willing to accept something around the first deals that weren't really that great does that make sense so i, yeah, I think yeah. if i were to bet i think it's i think it ends up getting worked out but it's going to be rockier than i thought it was going to be we're going to obviously get into over the course of this week leading up to the draft the, the scenarios that can benefit there's been we're going to get into nicholas claxton piece and some of the conversations we've been hearing about him on the market and what the nets are willing to do bruce brown situation obviously still looming as well so there, there are other mechanics that kind of happen around what happens here maybe is this is it interesting at all to say um if there is real if there is a real contentious conversation going on between kyrie irving and the brooklyn nets and they are that far apart. And to your point, Kyrie goes to the market and it's just not there. Nobody is offering him those big max dollars. Any world where he ends up just on the player option, just coming back in on the player option and saying, no matter what I want, whether it's in Brooklyn or somewhere else, I, I apparently need to play this one year to reset my market value. And then, by the way, put Brooklyn in just as hard or harder of a spot of saying, well, now if you want me, you're going to have to commit max dollars because I just played 65 plus games, went on a deep playoff run, everything else. Well, we've always thought that would be the best option, right? Like, yeah, that was, thought, that's, that's my dream. We've always thought that the player option as like a kind of a testing ground would be the, the one year way to do it for everyone to see if everyone's on the same page, because if it works out great, you give it max dollars. If it doesn't work out great, go find something else. Like I felt like that. And, and there's more teams that would maybe have availability at that point, And there's be like, you know, more of a window. 
I, I, we've always kind of hoped for that scenario to think. I don't know if that will happen, but I like these next couple of weeks are going to really tell the difference because I just think that there's going to be a reckoning. And by the way, I, I could be totally wrong. The market might be super robust for him. And like, there's multiple suitors and he is, is, you know, shooing away offers. I don't think that's going to be the case, but I'm, prepared to be fully wrong about that. Oh, can I say one more thing? Yeah, yeah. If, if, for, if somehow this is a sign and trade with Russell Westbrook, I, you might just have to find a new podcast partner. Like I, I, <laughs> I might be sitting it out. I, I don't know if I can do, I don't know if I can do, it's not even that. It's like, if they did a sign, it would like be the universe was exploding. If like somehow it was a sign and trade for Russell Westbrook and that was what happened. And it was like, that was going to be the new Nets experience. I'm, I'm not sure. I can handle it. So just prepare yourself for that one. <laughs> Solo edition of the Locked On Nets podcast. Check out the, the conversation uh, with Brian from Locked On Lakers because we, we get into that facet of it. Oh, um, additionally, to your point, though, man, the desperate teams, the Lakers might be. <laughs> but we, we, we have a good it's good talk. Good talk. It's a positive talk. Um, The desperate teams, though, that that's what I think is going to drive to your point. We'll be here to cover it over these next couple of weeks. What teams are desperate? What teams think that their window, you know, obviously think about LeBron and the window. That's desperation. What, you know, teams that feel like they missed their opportunity this year and could add to it. Some Western Conference teams. How do the Dallas Mavericks feel like they could have gotten close enough to the Phoenix Suns, right? Like, I just think that's what'll be fascinating to hear rumors around that. Are there desperate teams that think it's worth that risk to maybe get one year out of this operation? And if that starts to get a little bit of talk, to your point, having a sense of where is the market truly on Kyrie Irving. And I, I, I said this, this will be a repeat from what I said with, with Brian, every stop that Kyrie Irving has been in, it's the most recent team seems to have suffered the most in their experience with Kyrie Cleveland good experience championship. Then he forces his way out. Boston still had one good season, then bad times. Brooklyn did never really got the best version of anything even on a small sample size so you know buyer beware and maybe shh, don't tell anybody because i i don't know what the next thing looks like if this ends up going through fascinating though we'll be here oh celtics three years later the celtics made the finals so maybe that's gonna look at look at that as the oh, shiny beacon three of years away baby all right we have more to talk about this week uh we originally planned to talk about nick laxton because there was some news around that front um we'll save that for tomorrow uh but there is some possibly not amazing news on the nick laxton front either so we're going to get into that uh later in the meantime make sure you subscribe to Locked on Nets, wherever you listen to the podcast, free and available on all of those platforms. Really appreciate everyone coming along for the ride with us. Make sure you subscribe over on YouTube as well. We will be back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball.